Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another land battle. This is actually a continuation of our last video that, uh, our last land battle video that, um, was put up on the channel. Once again, we have Emperor Kandikatsu on the field of battle along with, um, <clears throat> Sager Godson. Uh, Emperor Kandikatsu playing as RDI, say, uh, Sager Godson as Masesli. I hope I'm saying that name right. If I'm, if it's wrong, then I apologize. And their opponents, once again, we have the Roadster 420 playing as Kush, which that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> and of course we have Clap Dem Cheeks Boy playing as Nabatea. So let's get into Army Comps real quick and then we'll start. This one, a little bit quicker than the last one, 17 minutes, 17 seconds. Let's get into this side and then we'll go over to the other side. Looks like uh, six. We no cav. Yeah, so six, six range, right? No, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight range. They're allowed to bring. Man, all right. So anyway, uh, so Numidian noble cav, armored Numidian cavalry, armored Numidian cavalry. Uh, oh no, he's got one, two, three, four, five. So we're really going heavy. Maybe it was just, uh, because they only have four slingers over here. What do they got? And they only have four. Sorry. Right, so maybe it was one side was allowed to bring uh, six archers if they wanted to. Anyway. All right. All right, all right. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So we got Numidian Noble Cav, Armor Numidian Cavalry, Armor Numidian Cavalry, Noble Cav, and Noble Cav. Then we got, let's see, slingers, 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 and slingers. Got some Numidian light infantry, desert legionnaires, no cohort, I think one cohort maybe, nope, no cohort, and then some more Numidian lights on the right flank. RDI has brought with him some mercenary Celtic warriors, ooh, double, double chevron, uh, silver chevron. Mercenary axe warriors, uh, Celtics, once again. Lyrian Hoplites, scary unit. Lyrian Noble Hoplite, or no, these are just mercenary Hoplites, Lyrian Hoplites, Lyrian Noble Hoplites, and then mercenary Hoplites and Lyrian Hoplites. Back lines, Lyrian Marines, and then one Lyrian Cav. Kush is bringing with him. Looks like three Nubian Bowmen and one Royal Kush. Uh, Kushai archers. The front line looks like some slave infantry. Shotel warriors, the second line. And we got some disciples of Piedmac. Uh, flanking of some armored Shotel warriors. And then we got Kushite slave spears in the rear. Nabatea is bringing with him, let's see, Hellenic desert cataphracts, camel spears, armored desert cav. Noble Swords, uh, Desert Hoplites, Caravan Guard, Caravan Guard, some ar Armored Desert Hoplites, Desert Hoplites, Noble Swords, right, Camel Archers, Armored Desert Cavalry, Armored Camel Spearmen, and Nabatean Noble Cav. And then we have, looks like, just Nabatean Heavy Archers across the board. Nope, two Slingers. Uh, three Slingers, actually, and two Nabatean Heavy Archers. All right. Let's get this one underway. I'm gonna see a little bit of the same. Looks like Nabatea smartly is uh, stretched out his lines. So they're sticking a little bit closer to each other this time around. Smart move. Be able to support each other as needed. Safely moving forward with some of his cav. And it's Kush moving. Nope. Nabatea is shifting over his cavalry, though. Sace, the rest of Masesley's cab is moving. I wonder if he's going to... What's uh, their range here? 125, and their range is oof, 80. Initial damage is 41. Theirs is 35. So they pack a little bit more of a punch, but... 
they have to get closer in order to kill the Eagles. But these guys, it's their armor. Armor's pretty shit for them, so. They could get in and get a couple good uh, shots off. They might be able to melt those archers. You gotta be careful though, again, getting, getting close. Come on, pull out, pull out. Go, 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 go! 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 Man, how many did you get here? I got quite a bit actually. Uh, that was a 12, 12 guys. All right, RDI has inched forward just slightly, keeping a nice, tight, compact line. Not much movement though, other than uh, RDI moving. Oh, there we go. Sesame is moving forward. RDI. Holding firm. Mabati is still just uh, looks like he's toying around with his cab at the moment, setting up a nice little defensive perimeter so it's harder for Masaisley to get around. Falling back. Slinger's going to be able to get some shots off on these guys if they're not careful. Kush has once again moved forward. Skirmisher engagements going on here. What are they going to do? They got to be careful with those slingers. I mean, they won't take too much damage from them, but it'll chip away at the health. And then uh, once the health gets to a certain point, then they'll start to lose. Man, I'd just be working on the the camel archer. So honestly, I mean, he's leaving them there. You could probably get a nice charge in because these guys are. The Armored Desert, uh, Armored Dominion Cavalry is a pretty solid unit uh, by itself. sasley has got to be careful here. Navatia does have some pretty good cav. Back over here, Kush has moved up even more. Really just playing with cav over here. Honestly, you could probably uh, move these guys closer, or at least get them closer to the, especially the heavy archers. And you could do some damage to them. I mean, he, like, I don't know what the hell Navati is. Oh, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. Really forcing Navatia to shift around here. Oh, Ooh. just, just missed it. Just missed it. He almost caught Masaisley's cab. He almost caught them, but he ended up taking some hits himself. Look at this. Very aggressive by Masaisley, making Kush kind of catty corner here. I, uh, I don't know which way this will go though for her. As far as the Noble Swords go, uh, I don't know if they'll be able to, I don't think they'll be able to stand up to the Desert Legionaries. And honestly, I, I, the Armored Desert Hoplites, I don't think we'll be able to do much of anything either, or the Caravan Guard. Nabatee is really gonna have to rely mostly on his cab, and he's mistakenly. What? Oh, how did this happen? Not that it matters, because this is just basically a suicide run. See, there it goes. So there goes some more Nabatee's cab, or just one of Nabatee's cab at least. Uh, I mean, with the build that he has here. Like I was saying, he, he has to rely heavily on his cap to do most of the heavy lifting. The problem is, Masaisley is doing a great job of kiting him right now. Uh, and making him, making Nabatia push forward. And then, of course, in true kiting fashion, Masaisley falls back and just throws some jabs. 
whittling away at Nabatea's uh, cavalry. I think what mostly you have to be worried about here is Kush and their Shotels and armored Shotel warriors, and of course the Disciples of Piedmac too. Which honestly, if I'm RDI, it's probably like the first thing. Or at least even with one Slinger unit, that's what I'm going to be targeting, because their armor isn't spectacular in any shape or form of the word. Ooh, Tribal Slinger is getting focused down pretty hard over here. Front line is moving forward, though. Ah, Masace has got to be careful, though. He's leaving a wide gap here. I mean, he's moving up his cab to counter the possible charge, but still. Ooh. Yeah! Piedmac Mac took a bit of a hit here. Leary and Cab getting into the mix. Charge! Definitely not the greatest. It looks like they're basically just like Citizen Cab. It might even actually be worse than Citizen Cab. But they're in here doing some damage. Caused the Kushite General to lose quite a bit of men. Disciples of Piedmac Mac have lost quite a few guys already. Now we can see, looks like uh, Sace is going to try and chase down the cab here. And now their slingers are completely left wide open. Honestly, though, at this point, uh, I don't really think it matters. They don't have a lot of guys left. I, I, may, I, I probably wouldn't even worry about them, honestly. Stop chasing them. You're not going to catch them at this point. Let's... I mean, all of Masaisley's cab is coming over here to sweep in. Camel Spears charging into the rear of some Desert Legionaries. Honestly, I mean, they're not shock cabs, so they only get a bonus against large. These guys aren't going to last very long, I don't think. Desert Hoplites are already getting broken and sent out of here. Slayers getting moved up. It's, it, it's being put in a bad position. Nabatee is already crumbling. Their front line's gone, and their noble sword's going to be gone soon. They'll be able to take care of Nabatee pretty quickly if, if they have the chance to. Um, and once they do that, then they can just wrap around and they can completely envelop Kush over here. Celtic Warriors and Axe Warriors moving forward, charging into the Kushite Slaves. It's Celtic Warriors are going to have a field day. Axe Warriors would probably be pretty good against them, too. Honestly. Uh, but now we got the Disciples of Piedmac and Shotel Warriors moving forward. Kush is just completely committing his entire forces. Uh, looks like he's going to try and swing around some of the Kushite Slave Spears. Uh, but these uh, Illyrian Marines are just going to absolutely shred these disciples of the Piedmac and some of the other units here. Meanwhile, the fight over here is going... Uh, I guess you could say that it's sort of even for both sides. I mean, Nabatea's front line is completely gone, but they still have a couple cavalry units riding around. But honestly, uh, actually they don't really have a lot of cav left, do they? They have like no cav left. All right, never mind. Nabatee, it's not a—it's not an even fight. Nabatee is getting their asses handed to them. <laughs> oh, look at this. Uh, these slingers are, yep, firing just right into the camel archers. I mean, honestly, the camel archers probably should have charged into the slingers. Too late now, though. They're getting backed up by some desert legionaries. Nabatee, I think it is safe to say that Nabatee, uh, or, yeah, is, is done for. Meanwhile, Kush. Seems to not be having the greatest of time here. Armored Shutta Warriors have hit Valyrian and Noble Hoplites. Naturally, the Shutta Warriors are going to have a field day with the extreme amount of armor the Illyrian Noble Hoplites have. Uh, but Sacely is sending some troops over, it looks like. Hopefully, at least. Yep, to help deal. RDI is low-key. Uh, has been put in a tough spot. 
I mean, either way, Kush would have done good against either or, just because both uh, RDI and the Sacely have uh, high armored units. So, either way, I do a little bit better against that now. Clear Marines are going to get their asses handed to them, too, probably. If they don't, I'll be surprised. Who's in the size of So RDI got kind of troused. Oh, his general's gone, too. But Masaisley is still left. Kush's general's still alive, but I don't think that that will be for long. Five minutes and 35 seconds left guys don't forget if you're enjoying this don't forget to like share and subscribe clear means set up in a, a square formation just to try and uh, hold off the inevitable for as long as possible I mean, kush has some slave spears over here that he can at least maybe deter some of the cab or something but not happening so the RDI is trying to pull back his uh, Marines. They might still have some jabbies left. Same here. Probably trying to uh, save whatever ammo he has left. But I don't know if he's going to be able to get away in time, honestly. So, does Kush still have, yep, one unit of Disciple, Heat Mag, and, ooh, that's unfortunate, using your jabs on a routing unit. So it looks like there's only one Disciple, Disciples of Heat Mag left. Like that far? No, it's setting up the line. But his guys are getting shot in the back in the process. Uh, if Mosesley is lucky, uh, he'll still have some. Ammo left from his uh, cavalry. If that's the case, then uh, I mean, first things first, go after the disciples of feedback. I mean, there, yeah, there's 51 guys left, but that's still a scary fucking unit, man. Especially since they have a headhunt and frenzies charge. Like, oh, Jesus. They ain't pretty. Many in light of the tree. They're pretty good, actually. And wow, Kush is just like walking right into it. I mean, look, Ace. Like, do you not see what's going on here? He's just pulling you in. You keep going forward. And you're just letting him being able to, uh, whatever. But that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, you might have your spears in the back, but they're just slave spears. They do get a hefty bonus against large, uh, against cab, but still. They're just allowing themselves to get pulled in. I, if I, again, if I'm going to say silly, I might even, you know, pull back my legionaries a little bit more, or set them up a little bit more like this. But now you've just, you've encircled yourself. Congratulations. With my slinger, yep, there you go. General's dead. Now it's going to be a mass charge. Look at this, RDI's one lone unit. 
gonna make their way around. If they still have jabbies, throw them into the back of these Chotel Warriors. That's where you want them. Because they're gonna need all the help they can get against these uh, Chotel Warriors. Nice charge, honestly. Just racked up a lot of kills. And the Light of Betrayal will make quick work of these Kushite Slave Spears. They're gonna get a nice rear charge into these Shotel Warriors. Oof. victory. Love to see it. All right. Emperor Kandikatsu with 1,374 kills, 116 for his general and 180 for his Lyrian Noble Hoplite, 117 for the Lyrian Cav. Well done there uh, for a, a kind of a crap-ass unit. 32, 49, 66, and 32 for the Slingers. 29, 25 for the Lyrian Hoplites, 65, 72, 61, and 134 for the Marines, uh, and 110. Uh, 31 and 41 for the Axe Warriors, 93 and 112 for the Celtic Warriors, and then 28 and 53 for the Mercenary Hoplites. Uh, <clears throat> Sager Godson, I think that's it. Again, I, I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong. 2,965 kills, 152 for the Gen. Uh, 266, 131, 203 for the armored Numidian Cav, and then 3, 363, nice, for the Numidian Noble Cavalry. 1534, 13, 46 for the Tribal Slingers. 193, 226, 225, 250, and 180 for the Desert Legionaries, and then 171, 173, 92, 89, and 113 for the Numidian Light Infantry. Uh, the Rodster 420 getting 2,652 kills, 91 for his gen, 48, 101, and 53 for the Nubian Bowman, uh, 294 and 224 for the Armored Shota Warriors, 163 and 291 for the Disciples of Epidemac, uh, 44, 121, 151, and 81 for the Kushite Slave Spears, uh, pretty impressive actually. Uh, 16, 196, or 197, uh, 219 for the Shotel Warriors, and then 33, 65, 33, 74, and 53 for the Kushite Slave Infantry. And then Clap Them Cheeks with 1,047 kills, 19 for his Neptune Noble Cav General, 98 for the Armored Camel Spears, 4 for the Armored Desert Cav, 12 for the Armored Desert Cav, or for his, his Armored Desert Cav. 173 for the Camel Archers, 9 for the Camel Spears, and then 10 for the Hellenic Desert Cataphracts, 88 and 67 for the Numidian, or Jesus, Navatian Heavy Archers, 49, 64, and 8 for the Slingers, uh, 59 for the Armored Desert Hoplites, 12, 3, and 6 for the Caravan Guard, 4 and 10 for the Desert Hoplites, and then 124 and 120 for the Noble Swords. That's a good one. Uh, Oh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, in a land battle, I I wouldn't have brought uh, Royal Kushat archers. They're like, they're, they're badass archers. They're really good, but not worth bringing one as a general. He would have been better off with, uh, with, with Cav or even an elephant, honestly. Maybe. Probably not, actually. He would have been better off with Cav. But that's it. Guys, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I know I did. So I will see you all in the next one. Take care and have a great day. Peace out, guys.